Hi friends! Recently I have been thinking a lot about what I am collecting and how much money I have been spending on it. And so I'd like to share some tips and advice that I have learned in my three years of collecting to help save money on K-pop and K-pop comebacks. So first, what we do is we check the monthly K-pop calendar. And this is for like comebacks, for debuts, anything that you think that you will be spending money on. So I'm gonna go real quick, show you how I do this. So at the time I'm making this, December is the next upcoming month. So I'm going to type that in. And you can see a bunch of different comeback schedules. What I normally do is go to K-pop profiles and look through K-pop profiles here. However, this looks like 2022. So let's find the 2023 one. There we go. That looks better. So here you can see what is upcoming and the day that it is upcoming. So Artemis is releasing December 1st. Stacy is having a Japanese comeback. So for me, there is nothing that I collect coming up in December, so that's going to help me decide where I'm going to put my money. If, let's say, like, Red Velvet recently had a comeback back on November 13th, let's say they were doing it December 13th, I would know that I need to put aside some money for that comeback. So knowing what's coming up is going to be really helpful when deciding where your money's going. And that leads me into tip number two, which is make a budget, LOL. Because obviously that's pretty, like, you would think, oh yeah, everybody knows that. But not a lot of us do it, because like I know that I need to make a budget, but half the time I don't. I just set aside money and then I get, sometimes I'll get confused when I'm like, hey, wait a second, where did it all go? Because I've spent it all already and I still have a comeback left because I'm silly, but we'll get to that later. So making a budget is very important and I'm going to show you, I made a template and so I'll show you how I use that template to help me. So here is the budget sort of template that I use. I made it to just sort of like help and keep track. I'm not going to show the November one because it has like other people's usernames because I listed a bunch of cards, but we can start filling out December. So initial balance, I want to... I always feel kind of weird talking about money because obviously I have more than some people and less than some people and everybody's going to have their own opinion on how much I spend on my K-pop collection. So let's give out a random number. Let's say that my initial balance is 200 for the month. I want to spend no more than 200 on K-pop. So then that's for the total spent area notes. So I have no comebacks that I need to set aside money for, which is good. And then I don't think I have any merch drops, but I also haven't heard much about Cheon's merch drop. I wonder if I missed that actually come to think about it. This is why I write things down, because if I don't write them down, I don't remember. Okay. 
moving into December haven't received. I don't think there's anything that has been lost yet. I've been making a lot of trades, so nothing's lost yet. But I know I'm going to spend money on Sulgi for Red Velvet's comeback. I'm obviously going to spend money on Eyes One. Who else am I going to spend money on? I'm going to spend money on Chu, more than likely. Who else is in my collection? <laughs> this is why we have to write things down, otherwise I don't remember. I don't remember nothing twice. I am going to attempt to trade for them, but... I don't want to spend money on Purple Kiss, I would rather trade. So I'm not gonna put Purple Kiss, I'm not gonna put Oh My Girl, cause I'd rather trade. Unless something comes up that is like, oh my gosh, yes. So this is who I want to spend my money on. I also want La Seraphim and Ivan here. Okay, that's who I'm going to spend my money on. Alright, my goals. For this upcoming month, what are my goals? Only spend on one, two, three, four, five, those six groups. So there's goal number one. Goal number two. Hmm. Keep listing cards on IG. Goal number three. Focus on RV slash chip. All right, so that's my main focus. Those are my goals. We're gonna keep this total spend low, and this is what we've got. And once December rolls around, I'll start filling that out and filling in to and from. I feel like it's just like a checkbook, <laughs> but whatever. All right, so this is how I keep track for tip number two, and there are plenty of templates out there for like budgeting and a bunch of stuff. I made this one specifically for K-pop. If you have any ideas on how to make this better, feel free to let me know. Um, it is also in my Etsy shop if you are interested in it. But yeah, let's move on to number three. Alright, next. And this one is hard. Only buy one copy of the full album. That's really hard, especially when lots of groups put out like so many different versions so like red velvet that i brought up recently had like 14 or 19 different versions something like that and it's like you want especially if you collect a member it's like you want all of the member versions but is that really going to help your collection 
If yes, great. Then set aside money for that. If no, think about buying copies if you want them secondhand. So it is so much fun to go out to the store and to buy member versions and to be like, oh, yeah, I want this. What did we have? Um, this Solgi case version and this Solgi S mini version and this Solgi poster version. But realistically, where are you going to put it? And like, are you going to listen to all those CDs? No, it's mainly just for the photo cards. So, only buying one copy is helpful for your wallet. If you want to support the groups, the best way is to buy more copies of their albums. So making sure that you know ahead of time, hey, I really want to support NCT 127. So I am going to put aside money for more than one copy. Planning is going to get you everywhere when you want to save money. Which leads me to number four. Stay away from your local K-pop stores. <laughs> and again, that's hard too. Because like, half the time I'll go to Target for something and then I'll be like, oh, I should go check the K-pop section. And then I go buy another copy of an album I already have. When I could just get the photo card for six, seven dollars instead of spending a whole sixteen, seventeen dollars if it's like a digi pack or twenty some dollars on another full album. So, not putting yourself in that situation is the best way to not do it. And, like, there are lots of people who I know don't have the same sort of like money situation that I did where it is pretty easy to just not buy things because you don't have the money for it. Like you have other things you have to do, bills you have to pay. But if you have more of a disposable income and you want to save money, stay away. Just stay away. <laughs> That's the easiest way to not spend the extra money on stuff that you don't need. Number five. This seems like counterintuitive because sales are supposed to be things where like you spend less money, right? But anymore, sales are getting to the point to where they are tricking you into spending money on things that you wouldn't normally spend money on. So like Black Friday, Target had a buy two, get one free for all media. Well, walk in there being like, okay, cool. We'll buy two, get one free on things. But you don't need anything. But the sale's going on, and you want to take advantage of that sale. You want to get one for free. Well, it's not really buy one, get one free. It's more a discount on all of them that you might not have even needed in the first place. Or like Poker Market. Poker Market had like a free shipping sale, which is great, but they are always on a time frame. And so you have to spend, let's say you didn't even have anything like in your Poker Market cart. And their free shipping sale ends in a week. Now you have to spend a bunch of money to get a bunch of photo cards to get the free shipping. But then you also have to pay the fees. You have to pay the shipping and handling fee. So you're spending a bunch of money that you might not have originally spent because it's on that time frame. And so these like free shipping sales or buy one, get one free. A lot of times you wouldn't normally buy these things unless, like, normally, except that 
it's a limited time offer. You have to do it within this certain amount of time, so now you're spending more money. You feel? So, don't listen to the sales. The stuff will be there if you weren't originally planning on buying it. And all of a sudden, they have a sale, and you're like, oh, well, I could probably swing this. I could put this in. No, you weren't going to buy it. Don't listen to them. They're just being silly. So, I know it seems counterintuitive, but don't listen to the sales. Now, the last one, and this is the biggest one for me, because I struggle with this one a lot. Maybe. Recognize the immediate gratification monster. She's fun. She's cute. You want to just hold her. You want to give her what she wants. But you have to recognize her. Because immediate gratification is how we spend all of that money. It is easier to, not easier, but a lot of the times it's like, oh, I could pull a photo card right now and it might be what I want. Instead of waiting for a photo card to arrive that I bought or that I traded for, I could just get it right now. And recognizing that is really important. Because then you get to say, okay, do I want to feed this monster today or do I not? I know she's looking at me all cute with cute eyes, but do I listen to her? Mm, did I put it in my budget plan? No, no. I recognize that you're there, but today you're not going to get fed. Knowing that that is a thing is helpful. And if you don't go to the K-pop stores, then a lot of the times you won't even have to deal with your immediate gratification monster. But when you do, knowing that it's there is the first step to saying no to it. So those are things that I have found helpful and I hope you find helpful as well. They might not always help you, but knowing things like, okay, if I go to a store, I'm going to buy something. So I need to stay away from the stores. Knowing your spending habits is going to be the best way to help you save money on these k comebacks. Knowing yourself and knowing what is coming. Thank you for watching. I hope these helped, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!